Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. If you've got a pet, you've got an animal at home, dog, cat, you love them. Of course you do. They're like members of your family. They're like having extra children. But a lot of times we have guilt with our animals. And that can stem from many different reasons. Not having enough time to spend with them. I mean, the list goes on and on. How do you let go of that guilt with our animals? We're going to talk about that today with an animal communicator. No better person than Ani because she has the gift, ability to communicate with animals, can tell us what they're thinking. She's worked with many, many over the years and also worked with many people over the years with their animals. And and she's with us today. Ani, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's awesome to have you back on. Uh, uh, I want to tell everybody, AniAnimalIntuitive.com is your website and just want to share the The special summer deal you've got going on, it's been extended due to popular requests. So that means you get a 45-minute session, $35 off the price. If you go to Ani, A-N-I, animalintuitive.com, click the the purple banner there at the top. You can't miss it. And the special available until the end of this month, August 31st. Things are filling up fast if you want to book a session. And if you're thinking about your pets and maybe you're feeling guilty, should you be? That's that's really the the question I want to get into. Before we get to that, what are some of the reasons that a person would feel guilty around their animals, Ani? So, um, if you have a, an animal that is ill, if you have an animal that is maybe that you had to help, in other words, it, it might be around death or on there that they're a spirit now and they've crossed over. It could be because they had an accident or because their illness was a long illness, but you weren't aware of it. In other words, and then the third one is you might have guilt around the fact that you had to rehome your animal for whatever reason. Hmm. When you say rehome, what do you specifically mean by that? A rehome, I mean that you would have to, an animal that let's say you have as a pet, but it might be because of financial reasons Mm. or because of personal reasons. Maybe you're going through a divorce or uh, it it may be, it's not your animal and you got in, it's inherited. It's your animal friend through your aunt. And your animal and your aunt passed away, but you can't keep it. So you're going to have to find another home for it. Right. Such a sad situation. And and obviously you would feel guilt over that, that you had to not only leave the animal, not part of your immediate family, but should we be feeling guilt? You know, is let's say it's a dog. Are they, right. are they, are they hurt by it? You know, you communicate with them. What would you get back from a situation typically like that? Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question? Yeah. <laughs> if you communicate with animals, let's say you have to rehome an animal. Of right. course, of course, as, as the, the person, you know, you are the, it's your pet. You're feeling guilty. Should you be feeling guilty based on what the animal is feeling? Because we don't, we don't communicate. We don't know what the, the animal's feeling. Right. You should not. Hmm. Absolutely not. Okay. Do not, do not feel guilty about that due to the fact that a lot of times animals do not want to want you to know uh, that they're ill. Want you to know. Um want you to know that they're ill want you to know that why they're ill uh because it's part of their soul contract to experience the illness for whatever reason Mm. and we've talked about if you want to look back soul contracts and what they mean probably about five podcasts ago we discussed that in in deep death uh deep detail um and i just want to circle back to that as humans do we have soul contracts uh, of course, 
course we have soul contracts. Okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> I always yes. wonder about that ever, ever yeah. since we had that conversation. Yes. Okay. So how do you know that you're experiencing guilt? Like it's kind of a rhetorical question, but I wonder, you know, what are the signs? Okay. So if you are experiencing guilt, um, you can be, you can have problems sleeping. In other words, you have insomnia or you're waking up at night in the middle of the night. Okay. Um, you can also have the fact that you are, you have stomach problems. You could have stomach problems. You mm. could have fatigue, muscle tension, anxiety, sadness, obsessive, like obsessive, sad, um, well, sadness, and then obsessive thoughts about certain things. Like you're constantly thinking about, oh my gosh, I feel horrible that I, 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 I feel horrible about this guilt. Okay. And that's obsessive thoughts. Um, low self-esteem, undecisiveness. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this for this animal. Maybe I should, or it could be about other things in your life, but you just can't make a decision. Um, Self-sabotaging thoughts or behavior and emotional numbness. Ooh, interesting. So in other words, with emotional numbness, you're not feeling anything. You're just kind of like, you, you kind of checked out in that, in that category. Correct. Mm, wow. Huh. It's it. The guilt that you feel is the same uh, you would feel for another human. Really? When I, you know, the, everything that you described there seems like it's in line with that. Well, and remember, I, I wanted to remind our listeners that we are also animals. We're just a different type of animal, right? Mm, you're right. Yep. I, we, we forget that we are warm-blooded animals. Mm-hmm. Wow. We're mammals. Cats are mammals. Dogs are mammals, right? Mm. So our, our, our hamsters are mammals. <laughs> <laughs> True. Wow. So, uh, and, and actually, you know, we're going to, we actually have a question, but I'm going to put that question. We're going to get to it in a moment because it's, it's loosely connected to what we're talking about. Before we get to that, you have a meditation to let go of the guilt. Do you want to do that now? Can we jump into that? We can, if you would like to do that first, or do you want to just answer, do you want to answer, do you want to do, you want to do let's do the meditation in the end, I feel. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, the, so our question comes in from Jolene, who checks in from New Haven, Connecticut and says, hi, Ani, thank you for taking my question. My cat, hello, hasn't been the same lately. He seems to cling to my daughter and he was never like that. What can I do? Well, first of all, um, it seems to me, I mean, I would have to at least have a picture of the cat. I do believe, oh, you know what, Steve? I do believe that uh, the, the our producer might have sent me the picture. I think you might be right. Yeah. So do you want to... Do you, do you want to, how about, about, how about we do this? How about we do this? We take a short break. We come right back. We're going to answer that question, which is relatable to many of us because, you know, our, our animals act differently from time to time. Then we're going to give you a guided meditation to let the guilt go. If you're experiencing any kind of guilt with your animal, uh, sound good to you, Ani? Yes, let's do it. All right, we're coming right back. And by the way, if you want to check her out while we're on the break, it's Ani, A-N-I, AnimalIntuitive.com. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha, first pick. Sorry, kids. 
Yep, even easier than that. And with our top-rated app, you can bank anytime, anywhere, making Capital One an even easier decision. Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? New consumer accounts only. Approval required. Terms apply. Capital One and a member FDIC. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. <gasps> my dad used to say that. Sure, yeah. It's from Geico. Yeah, whenever I would ask my dad for life advice, he'd sit me down and say, son... 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. And look at me now, a well-adjusted adult with a drawer full of plastic bags I'll never use. <laughs> okay, I'm confused. Was your dad a licensed Geico agent? Nah, he was just a real good dad. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. Uh, dashboard light problems? We can help. Our free fix finder service can read your check engine light, ABS light, and service indicator light, and give you possible solutions, verified by licensed technicians. You'll even get detailed results sent straight to your email so you have them when you need it most. It's the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes. The free fix finder service, only at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. More details at AutoZone.com. Ani, Animal Intuitive experienced in bridging the communication between you and your animal friend, providing energy therapy for your animals who are ill or traumatized. Go to AniAnimalIntuitive.com. That's A-N-I AnimalIntuitive.com. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we're jumping on back with animal communicator Ani. And if you want to reach us, instantfeedbacksteve at gmail.com. We just read something from Jolene in New Haven, Connecticut. And her question has something to do with her cat, Hello, who hasn't been the same lately. Jolene says that Hello seems to cling to her daughter and was never like that before and is wondering what she should do. So she had sent a picture of Hello. Ani, have you found that picture? Yes, I have it right in front of me. I'm just going to con- awesome. gonna connect with Hello's energy. Sure. Okay. This is interesting, Steve. She keeps talking about noises. I'm scared of the noises, she said, the no- the new noises and sounds that I'm hearing. And um, now she's showing me a picture of, I don't know if they either a na- some type of neighbor that is remodeling and it's being, it's very noisy for her. Oh, okay. So there's construction going on in the, yeah. in the neighborhood and that's what's uh, causing that fear. Or, I don't know if they're in an apartment building apartment building or something very very close in other words it's i'm getting that it's like right there right on she feels like it's right on top of her that's what she keeps sharing with me it's right on top of me hmm this sound you know what's interesting that animals are so sensitive that we may just block that out it could be even three four five blocks away and there could be some, I'm just giving an example, could be construction going on. And we're like, yeah, it's a little bit of noise on the road, but your, your pets can be so much more sensitive and reacting and freaking out to it. You're right, Steve. You're right. And I have to tell you that it's interesting that this cat hello reminds me of one of the kittens that you were looking at that's black and white. Oh, really? Okay. Mm. Yes. So when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh coincidence no Mm -hmm. there's never a coincidence well that that i didn't i didn't adopt that cat i i adopted the orange tabby in the end because what happened was the foster accidentally gave that cat away to somebody else the one i that we had our eye on originally isn't that isn't that interesting because i keep getting it's like the energy that you're drawing to you still the black and white Mm. isn't that interesting and and you know yes and we were drawn to that cat but in the end um Rocco yeah. who we have now is fantastic like it's just it's almost too good to be true he's he's only like 13 I weeks love old that yeah. name I Same. love that name for Halloween you have to get him a little gangster outfit please you yeah. know like like a 1920s <laughs> gangster 
Yeah, with, with that, if I can get a hat on him too, but uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> you know what? He probably would do it because he's a he's that playful. Although, not to digress here, and we'll get back on track. But funny over the weekend, I introduced him to my dog Tanner for the first time. We've kept we've kept Rocco in a separate room, my daughter's room, and just we wanted to wait till he got acclimated uh, to new surroundings. And the two of them, it, it, it went well for a little bit, and then Tanner wanted to play, and Rocco. He just wasn't in the mood. He stood right up. He wasn't having it. He had that, meow, like, go away for now. Um, but they, they seem to be integrating pretty well. But uh, it's interesting watching stuff like that. Uh, all right. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, all good. So in in uh, Jolene's situation, she needs to be mindful of what's going on around her if there is some construction at a, at a neighbor's house, you say. Correct. And uh, Jolene... Please look into, on my YouTube, I have a video that shows you how to do surrogate EFT tapping. So just go to, mm. go to YouTube and type in A-N-I, animal, Ani, so it's Ani, animal, intuitive. And you're going to go to where it says surrogate, EFT surrogate tapping for animals. Follow that video. I mean, you know, watch the video and follow the instructions. And then also there is solfeggio music. Mm. And I'm getting uh, that the frequency three, nine, six would be good for him, for your, for your kitty. Hello. I love the name. And I also am getting that four to 17 Hertz would also be good. Wow. Okay. So I learned something here today because I was familiar with different types of music and the frequency of that music. And like, for example, I'm going my memory here, but I want to say 417 Hertz is extremely relaxing. Um, And there's, you can find it on YouTube. It it goes on for like three hours or longer. Uh, Didn't know that you could listen to that or play that for an animal to help them. Wow. Yes. And there's many different types of solfeggio frequencies for different things. There's even one for pain. That's fabulous. Unbelievable. Wow. Okay. And it, it, no harm done. All you're just playing is some melodic tones in the background while your animal's in the room. It's not going to hurt them. Yes. And do remember to turn it down low because yeah. they are much more. Back to talking about your animals and guilt where we, we started today. Um Aside from what we're going to get to, a guided meditation to help you let go of that guilt, what are some other ways to do that? Do you have some suggestions, Ani? Yes. So um, so what you can do is, first of all, you're going to spend some time with your thoughts. Why are you feeling this way? What fraction of the thoughts? So you're going to, you know, becoming... In other words, how, how, how are you going to deal with it differently? Okay. And then change the negative thoughts into positive thoughts. And I am talking about self-talk. So positive affirmations. Okay. Mm. Um, and then realize that your guilt is a sign that you do lo- how much you love your animal. Okay. So for instance, let's say it is a rehoming situation. And how to change your thoughts into a positive, right? You, by rehoming that animal, you are giving another family the opportunity to have that self. And by that, you may have to, you can even hug yourself. You can tell yourself, I forgive myself. You might have to do all of that. And then recognize that you cannot change the past. So you just have to, in other words, let it go, right? And then talk about your feelings if you have to with others, if it's very deep, if you're going through bereavement. Wow. And and again, a lot of this is what we would tell somebody if they were feeling guilt over another human. Correct. Yeah. Interesting how, uh, well, you know what? We have such a strong- right. Yeah. Exactly. So why don't we uh, why don't we look at that the the guided meditation for letting the guilt go and uh you're going to do a demonstration, right? 
Yes, I am. So everyone, just please relax now. Please, up last time when we did a guided meditation, do not be driving any machinery or vehicles. I need you to be in a quiet space yep. and relaxed. Now we're going to take three deep breaths, belly breaths, slowly. One, and out. Two, and out. And three, relax all of your muscles and give yourself permission to completely relax everything. Now, I want you to visualize that your animal is right in front of you. Even if they are in spirit or if you have rehomed them, okay? And I want you to share with them, if you feel like you need to apologize in order to let this go, you have to follow your heart. And by the way, this is heart mind. So make sure that you've brought your mind, you bring your mind down into your heart, okay? And you're going to say to your animal, once you've pictured them right in front of you, I'm, I'm sorry for whatever you feel that you did and I love you and you are in a better place or let's say if they're ill, you say, I'm sorry. You might have to say, I'm sorry for not recognizing your illness sooner, whatever it is that you feel the guilt about, because this is really about you. They, there's nothing for them to forgive. Okay. Because they're pure love. So They don't have the issue with this. This is about you not carrying this guilt because it's not healthy with the relationship you have with them. So say, I'm sorry that I, that, that you, I didn't recognize your, that I didn't recognize your illness or that you died the way that you did or that I had to give you away. And I'm grateful that you were in my life or that you are in my life. I am grateful for all the love that you've showed me. That you, sh- I'm grateful for the time that we had together. Now let's look at all the positive things. And you're, gonna, you're going to visually hug them. You're going to also... Before that, I want you to take all of that tension and those feelings that you still maybe have bottled up, place it into a, visualize that you're placing it into a box or a balloon. You can visualize that you're blowing it up, setting it on fire or erasing it. Mm. And you're going to totally let that go. And at the end, you're going to hug your animal again, and you're going to say, thank you for everything, for everything that you taught me, for the experience that we had together. And I am releasing this now. So be it. So it is. And just let it go. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Now, if you still feel that it's still there, you're having a difficult time with it, you can do this meditation again, where there are a lot of other guided meditations on YouTube um, that can help you through guilt to let go. I will be, I think I'm going to be, I'm going to maybe put some on my YouTube channel myself. Um, So... What the other thing that is really good to remember here, everybody, is if it's really intense, go ahead and write your animal a letter and burn it. So you're letting it go. Burn Mm. it to ash. Wow. The one thing that stood out during the meditation is reaching out and hugging your animal. Like, 
visualizing them in front of you. I did a hypnotherapy session, and I'll just share this because it was very powerful. I knew I wanted to go back to my childhood. And during that, I, with my eyes closed, the hypnotherapist had me reach out and hug myself as a child. And I would think it would be the same thing if you were to do that for your animal. Yes, and I do. Absolutely, Steve. And let me tell you why. The other thing that you can go back to that I want to remind everybody of is to visualize all of the good memories. Not when you had to put your animal down. Mm. Not the moment. Don't keep replaying the moment that you had to give your animal up. Don't keep replaying the moment of how ill your animal was because they don't want you to remember them like that. Mm. They, they want you, they remember all the good memories. Yep. Yep. Okay. So re- pl- replace the memories with the good, replace them with the good and keep visualizing the happy memories. And I am speaking from experience also as a person that had It was traumatizing for me when I had to put down my miniature schnauzer when I was 21 years old. Mm. Had her since I since since I was a young teenager. Even though I can communicate with animals in this life, I had never put an animal to sleep. Wow, which is pretty impactful considering what you do and what you're involved with, right? That. that that was the first time that that ever took place. Yeah, because I wasn't, I, it, it, it just, I either had another family, I was too young and I had another family member that would deal with it for me or what have you. It was the first time that I was actually present. Wow. So when she took her last breath, it was a lot for me. And it took me five years to get over it. And I remember Somebody had to put me under hypnotherapy to visual, to help me visualize, Steve, just like you brought up, to help me visualize and erase that thought. That's another thing that you can do. Visually get an eraser and erase the thought and replace it. Get the replaced happy thought, maybe of them when they were a puppy or a kitten or a little foal or whatever, you know. Whatever happy thought you have with them, that's what you replace it with. I love that. Hmm. And, you know, talking about, I'm, I'm going to digress again for a moment. My daughter messaged me the other day from upstairs. <laughs> she was, you know, the new cat's room. <laughs> and uh, I had to put down Maestro uh, in 2019. And he was just the sweetest cat. And when we got this new cat and actually you read maestro from the other side right spot on uh but she had said you know his body sort of looks like maestro and they were both orange tabbies and she said the other night it's like he it's just like maestro is back again so it's almost as if he came back and we talk about we've talked about this before past life regressions i'm thinking that that may have that's maybe what's going on here i don't know what do you think also could be an aspect of Maestro's soul. Hmm. Yes. Never. So it's not a full part, it's, but it's called an aspect of. Okay. Never thought of that. Wow. We are, we are just about out of time. Got pretty deep here, but for a good reason. And if you want to find out any more, Ani's website has so much information uh, and ways to contact her. By the way, we have the the summer special deal going on. I might even do a session with with Rocco again to to to, to figure out if 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 there's a connection to Maestro here. That'd be great, <laughs> right? Uh, Forty five minute session, thirty five dollars off that price at a n i ani animal intuitive dot com. You'll see it right there on the uh, on the homepage, right purple banner. You click that. Only for another couple of weeks, brought it back by uh, popular demand. It's filling up fast, so definitely make your appointment. And uh, powerful stuff today, Ani. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, and you can find me on social media. I am on YouTube, on Facebook. I put up videos, four, four to five videos a week on these platforms. I'm not, not on 
YouTube, but on on the other platforms, I do put up four to five a week, but I am YouTube. I am going to be putting up at least once a week. Fantastic. And we, you know what? You really run deep. So if anybody has any questions, they can go to your website, but at the same time, they can go there and uh, and book a reading. Or if you have a question, maybe you're not sure what well, Ani can do. Well, if you do. have a question, please 